Cheryl Lee Calico, born February 28, 1969, is an American woman who disappeared near her home in Belen, New Mexico on September 20, 1988. Tara's friends and family would constantly describe Tara as one of the most motivated individuals they had ever met. Tara was also very health conscious. She had a regular routine of exercise, bike riding, and tennis with her boyfriend as planned the day she went missing. Tara's plans that day were to go for an early bike ride for her usual 36 mile ride so that she would be in time to meet up with her boyfriend for a few hours of tennis at 12.30. And later, she had a 4 p.m. class scheduled. Eerily, Tara had asked her mother to come get her if she didn't get back in good time. She's widely believed to have been kidnapped. Belen is the second most populous city in Valencia County, New Mexico. After its county seat, Las Lunas, the population was 7,269 at the 2010 census. Belen is Spanish for Bethlehem, but gained the nickname the Hub City. The city is geographically near the center of New Mexico. The city is located 35 miles south of Albuquerque. In 1990, Belen, New Mexico had a population of approximately 6,500 people. In July of 1989, a Polaroid photograph of an unidentified young woman and boy gagged and seemingly bound was televised to the public after it was found in a convenience store parking lot in Port St. Joe, Florida. Family friends thought the woman resembled Calico and contacted her mother, who then met with investigators and examined the photograph. She believed it was her daughter after taking time, growth, and lack of makeup into consideration, and noted that a scar on the woman's leg was identical to the one that her daughter had. Scotland Yard analyzed the photo and concluded that the woman was Tara. But a second analysis by the Los Alamos National Laboratory disagreed. An FBI analysis of the photo was inconclusive. Calico's case received extensive coverage on television programs such as A Current Affair, Unsolved Mysteries, and America's Most Wanted. It was also profiled on The Oprah Winfrey Show and 48 Hours. As of 2021, no arrests have been made and the case remains open. On the morning of Tuesday, September 20th of 1988, Calico left her home at about 9.30 a.m. to go on her daily bike ride along New Mexico State Road 47. She rode that route almost every morning and was sometimes accompanied by her mother, Patty Dole. However, Dole stopped riding with Calico after she felt that she'd been stalked by a motorist. She advised her daughter to think about carrying mace. But Tara rejected the idea. On the morning of Tara's disappearance, she had told her mother to come and get her if she was not home by noon. As she had plans to play tennis with her boyfriend at 12.30. When her daughter didn't return, Tara's mother went searching for her along her usual bike route, but could not find her. She then contacted the police. Pieces of Calico Sony Walkman and a cassette tape were later discovered along the road. Her mother believed that she might have dropped them in an attempt to mark her trail. Several people saw Tara riding her bicycle, which has never been found. No one witnessed her presumed abduction, although several witnesses observed a light-colored pickup truck, possibly a 1953 Ford with a camper shell following closely behind her. On June 15th of 1989, a Polaroid photograph of an unidentified young woman and a boy, both gagged with black duct tape and seemingly bound, was discovered in the parking lot of a convenience store in Port St. Joe, Florida. The woman who found the photo said that it was in a parking space 
where a white, windowless Toyota cargo van had been parked when she arrived at the store. She said that the van was being driven by a man with a mustache who appeared to be in his 30s. Police set up roadblocks to intercept the vehicle, but the man has never been identified. According to Polaroid officials, the picture had to have been taken after May of 1989 because the particular film used in the photograph was not available until then. The photo was broadcast on a current affair in July, and Dole, Tara's mother, was contacted by friends who had seen the show and thought the woman resembled Tara. Relatives of Michael Henley, also of New Mexico, who had disappeared in April of 1988, saw the episode and said that they believed he was the boy in the photo. Tara's mother and Henley's parents both met with investigators and examined the Polaroid. Dole said that she was convinced it was Tara. She also noted that a scar on the woman's leg was identical to one that Tara had received in a car accident. The scar was in the same location on Tara's leg as they could see in that Polaroid photo. In addition, a paperback copy of V.C. Andrews' My Sweet Audrina, said to be one of Calico's favorite books, can be seen lying next to the woman in the Polaroid. Scotland Yard analyzed the photo and concluded that the woman was Tara. But a second analysis by the Los Alamos National Laboratory disagreed. An FBI analysis of the photo was inconclusive. Henley's mother said that she was almost certain it was Michael in the Polaroid. The identification of the boy in the photograph as Henley is considered highly unlikely. His remains were discovered in June of 1990 in the Zuni Mountains, about 7 miles or 11 kilometers from his family's campsite, from which he had disappeared, and 75 miles or 121 kilometers from where Calico disappeared. Police believe that Henley wandered off and subsequently died of exposure. In 2009, 20 years after the Polaroid photo was found and shared by the media, pictures of a boy were sent to the Port St. Joe police chief, David Barnes. He received two letters, postmarked June 10th and August 10th of 2009, from Albuquerque, New Mexico. One letter contained a photo printed on copy paper of a young boy with sandy brown hair. Someone had drawn a black band in ink on the photo over the boy's mouth as if it were covered in tape as in the 1989 picture. The second letter contained an original image of the boy. On August 12th, the Star newspaper in Port St. Joe received a third letter, also postmarked in Albuquerque on August 10th, and depicting the same image of a boy with black marker drawn over his mouth. The boy has not been confirmed to be the same one as in the previous photo. None of the letters contain a return address or a note indicating the child's identity, making the officials there believe it may have been something to do with Tara's disappearance. The letters were sent at the same time that a self-proclaimed psychic had called about Calico, saying that she had met a runaway in California with whom she worked with in a strip club. The girl was eventually murdered. The caller said she had dreams suggesting the runaway may have been Tara and that she may have been buried in California. Searches did not lead to any discoveries. The photos were given to the FBI for further investigation in hope of finding fingerprints or possible DNA evidence. Two other Polaroid photographs, possibly of Tara, have surfaced over the years. The first was found 
near a construction site in Montecito, California, and is a blurry photo of a girl's face with tape covering her mouth and light blue stripped fabric behind her, similar to that of the pillow in the Toyota van photo. It was taken on film that was not available until June of 1989. The second shows a woman loosely bound in gauze, her eyes covered with more gauze and large black framed glasses with a male passenger beside her on an Amtrak train. The film used was not available until February of 1990. Calico's mother believed the first one was Tara, but thought that the second one may have been a gag. Her sister stated they had a striking, uncalming resemblance. As for me, I will not rule them out, but keep in mind our family has had to identify many other photographs, and all but those three were ruled out. In 2008, Rene Rivera, the sheriff of Valencia County, reported that he received information that two teenagers had accidentally hit Calico with a truck, panicked, and subsequently killed her. According to Rivera, the boys who knew Calico drove up behind her in a truck and some form of accident followed. Calico later died and those responsible covered up the crime. Rivera stated that he knew the names of those involved, but that without a body, he could not make a case. He did not release the evidence that led him to this conclusion. Tara's stepfather, John Dole, said that the sheriff should not have made these comments if he was not willing to arrest anyone, and that strong circumstantial evidence should be enough for a conviction. In October of 2013, a six-person task force was established to reinvestigate Calico's disappearance. As of 2017, no arrests have been made and the case remains open. On October 1st of 2019, the FBI announced that they are offering a reward of up to $20,000 for precise details leading to the identification or location of Tara Lee Calico and information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible for her disappearance. In September of 2021, the Valencia County Sheriff's Office and the New Mexico State Police issued a statement that they had a new lead in the case and that the focus of a sealed warrant for an unknown private residence located within Valencia County had been issued. However, no further details were provided. As the mystery stretched on, Tara's family refused to wait passively for news. Her mother and her stepfather, John Dole, took the extraordinary step of becoming deputized in Valencia County, compiling police records and chasing leads from state to state. Patty and John kept hoping Tara would be found alive, and they stocked her bedroom with new gifts for every birthday and Christmas that went by. In 2006, after years of declining health, Patty died of complications following a series of strokes. John and I finally had closure that Tara was dead, says Chris, but Mom never did. She would constantly have dreams that Tara was home and then wake up in tears. The toll Tara's disappearance took on the family affected her stepsister Michelle, 49, so much that in 2010, 22 years after Tara's disappearance, she and Tara's high school pal, Melinda Escobel, began scouring police files and re-interviewing witnesses in an effort to keep the case alive. In 2017, Escobel launched the podcast, Vanished, the Tara Calico investigation. She is convinced that she and Michelle are getting closer to locating Tara's remains. I want to know where she is, Michelle said in 2018. I also want somebody to pay for it. So does the former Valencia Sheriff, Rene Rivera, who was the lead investigator on the case from 1996 to 2007. Rivera says it's likely that Tara was killed by teenage boys she knew. In 2008, he told the Albuquerque Journal that he believed that the parents of those boys were complicit in hiding the truth 
about what happened to Tara. According to police records, she had been receiving threatening notes on her car windshield in the months before she disappeared, and multiple witnesses have reported that Tara was followed by a pickup truck the day she went missing. Somebody out there knows something, FBI Supervisor Special Agent Ben Bourgeois told People. For those closest to Tara, that there may finally be answers about her fate, and someone brought to justice for it, would mean some measure of peace. She was a good person, very sweet and very smart, said Tara's friend, Janie Evans. If anyone knows anything, come forward and let the family know. It's more than just closure. The not knowing is the worst part. Tara Calico's parents never gave up hope. They kept a room for Tara in their home and bought her presents for every special occasion, hoping that one day she'd return home. Patty Dole ultimately believed it was her daughter in the Polaroid and believed Tara was alive somewhere. Both John and Patty Dole have passed away without receiving answers as to what happened to their beloved daughter. Tara Calico leaves behind her older brother, Chris, her stepsister, Michelle, and her friend from high school, Melinda Escobel. The three of them have never stopped trying to find answers. Someone out there has information and knows what happened to this young woman. Regardless of whether Tara Calico is the woman in the Polaroid or not, she never did make it home that day from her bike ride. Her family deserves closure. If you know anything about this case, please contact the Valencia City Sheriff's Office at 505-866-2400. Tara Calico hopped on her mother's neon pink Huffy mountain bike and rode her usual route on New Mexico State Road 47. Tara only brought her Sony Walkman, headphones, and a Boston cassette tape. Despite the fact that no one witnessed the abduction, several people later reported seeing Tara riding her bike towards her home at around 11.45 a.m. She was said to be wearing headphones, and several witnesses saw an older model, white or light-colored pickup truck, trailing behind her. It is believed that the truck was towing a shell camper. This was the only information investigators had for the first nine months after Tara went missing, along with the County Sheriff's Department. At 505-864-9604, you can also contact the Federal Bureau of Investigation in New Mexico at 505-224-2000. The FBI announced a $20,000 reward in 2019 for specific information about the location of Tara. The FBI released age progression photos showing what Tara would currently look like.